Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome into the Women in Business radio show studio. I'm telling you, it's going to be a right one today. Everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong. If you were listening in, you would have heard a new normal lurch in. But we are now live in the studio. And let me introduce who is here with me. So my co-host today is the lovely Grace Kelly. Grace is the founder of 21st Century Carpet. She's also the chair of Women in Business Mid-Kent. And it's lovely. Grace is also a really good friend of mine. And it's just lovely to have her in the studio today. It's a real, real treat. So welcome, Grace. Thank you, Sean. It's lovely to be here. I do wish I could see you, actually. <laughs> because Grace is buried behind a telephone and a bottle of water. You're not very tall, are you? No, all four foot eleven of myself. <laughs> so I sort of lost her behind the back of the console. So I think we're going to have to do something about that because it would be quite nice if I could actually see you oh, whilst, we're having, whilst we're having the conversation. Also in the studio with us today, our special guest is, Car- is Katrina Festerazzi. And Katrina is the founder and owner of Fast to Photo. Now, at the moment, Katrina actually isn't able to say hello or talk because she <laughs> because she's doing the photos every so time <laughs> every time I come in here Katrina can you take photographs <laughs> so she's doing you see Katrina's doing videos <laughs> it's like I don't know what's that the equivalent of it's like inviting somebody for dinner isn't it and, and then get and then getting them to and then getting them to washing like, up. Do, <laughs> the plates, so the, the plates out and yeah, they, they can't actually eat any dinner because they're too busy doing the catering. <laughs> I don't mind. I'll just, send you my invoice after. Just as well, isn't it? Just as well. <laughs> So, oh, goodness knows what we're going to be talking about today. Absolutely no idea. Um, we've got a few announcements first. So the announcement, I think I think everybody's going to be thrilled to bits when August the 10th actually arrives and we have a different <laughs> announcement. We'll have just something else to talk about. So the Women in Business Big Show 2023 is on August the 10th and it's particularly relevant today because both of the people in the studio with me are really connected and involved with the show. So women in business mid kent um and grace is the chair is is one of the sponsors of the show and he's going to be running a networking event excellent at the start and also something else that i'm trying to see if i can sort of sort out without it being too chaotic i've seen grace in action so (laughs) (laughs) i'm trying to i'm trying to see if we can find an area that they can be corralled in (laughs) because i i think um Women in Business Mid Kent, of which I also go along, I'm a, I'm a regular member, is a fant- absolutely fantastic place if you're starting out in business. You know, it's really affordable, it's really friendly, and there's some really good ideas come out. And I think that when you're starting out, that's actually critical. You know, if you're going to go networking, you, my personal opinion is you do not want to be going somewhere that's costing an absolute fortune for one thing, um, that ties you into anything. Because I did all of this. I, when I first started out in, in business, I didn't have an awful lot of money to invest. And I ended up paying sort of quite a lot as, a, as a, an annual fee and then going along monthly. And it was really, really structured and really actually quite uncomfortable. And when I think about it, not particularly friendly and supportive either. So have, finding your first networking event that's both affordable and friendly and people are really kind... And it's okay. There isn't too much structure, but there's enough. Um, and it's sort of okay to get things wrong. Is I think really, really important. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and Grace chairs that. So you know, fair play to Grace. It's her that organises that. Katrina, a faster photo. Who, Katrina actually has more than one role at the moment, mm-hmm. and I can't imagine two roles that are as <laughs> far removed from each other as this one. I thought I had trouble with a lot, with my businesses being so so you know having so many businesses, but actually I can put a, a little umbrella over mine and go, hey, these guys all belong together. Um, but Katrina, you can't. And we're going to be talking about that later. Mm, okay. um, so, but <laughs> Katrina is faster photo in her role as um, queen photographer and all of that sort of thing. Is now I've got it wrong again. You are going to be our reels consultant. I'm going to be the reels consultant, the, keeping the, it reels. The reel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you say that again, okay, I'm going to have to slap you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it so many times, and you can't reach me. <laughs> I can. I can climb over the table. <laughs> Let me video that. <laughs> I can be over there. Um, 
So Katrina is our reels consultant, and that follows on from her actually doing um, a reel last it year. So funny. And if you go and have a look on some of our social media profiles, so that's Women in Business Radio Show, and if you also have a look on mine, I think it's been posted out on mine as well. We've got some really good reels of some of our exhibitors from last year, and I loved it so much. I asked if she would come back and do it this year. So she is. We're, we're going to do try and do six different types of reels on the day. Last year's was six amazing. Different Loved times. it. Six. Yeah, six. Oh, I did one last year. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm. Okay. Deviating straight off from okay. from where we're supposed to be heading. Um, what are the six different types? Of, when you say six different types oh, of reels, so when I talk about six different types of reels, so the reel that I did was just one reel. It was one piece of music. Yeah. Okay. And one particular style. I've got six different ideas that I'm going to link to what people are going to be doing. Right, so it's not a tech, It's not six different no. technical things. No. It's so, so I think what you're saying here is we're going to have to wait for the event I'm to find out <laughs> what these are going to be. So yeah. it's, it's, seek of it all. It's, yeah. it's six different styles That's correct. of yeah. reels. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. So hang on a moment, folks. I've got two things that are wrong here. Number one, I haven't taken my chewing gum out. And number two, my chair is wrong. It's either too high or too low. But I'm, I don't know. I Just don't know. over her mic. I'm like an emu. I'm, something's not going quite well. Hang on a minute. If I fall off the chair, Grace, you know it's your... <laughs> no, I'm going to video. Just take, I'm there. Take, it's not going to be that exciting. We're only going down a couple of inches. I think that's better. Is that okay? Yeah. Right, okay. okay. That's a... Right, okay, that's a lot more interesting. Right then, okay, let's, um, should we get started? Mm. Because, what are we going to get started on? I think we're going to find out a little bit about what you're doing at the moment, Katrina, because okay. you have, you've started something else, haven't you? I have indeed. And you've started it quite recently, mm. and it's a cleaning business, it's, it's a cleaning it? company. What's it called again? It's called, because <laughs> I wanted to try and get my surname in there somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of played around with some words and I've come up with Razzy because I'm Festa Razzy. Yeah. So yeah. Razzy, Dazzle, Clean. Okay. So Razzy, I have actually got this written down here. Razzy, Dazzle, Clean. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it is very, very different, isn't it, from what you were doing? Yeah. How, do, how did this come about? Because I'm sort of, uh, let me tell you the angle that I'm coming at from this oh. is number, number one, like it, it, it's two separate and distinct income streams. Mm-hmm. But it's also two separate and distinct businesses as well. And I, I can't help thinking that sort of sat there thinking, I think lockdown has been challenging, hasn't it, for photographers and all sorts of things. So I can perhaps make up different reasons why you might have looked at, OK, what, what other income streams can I bring in? And even if, you're, even if we're not dealing with lockdown and challenges, that's a very sensible thing to do, isn't it? Absolutely. OK, so you were already doing and still continue to do, she says, flicking through her notes that she can't actually see. <laughs> um, so you do videography you do drone photography you do commercial photography you do com- you do photography for estate agents and interior designers so you're already doing a number of different different types of photography mm-hmm. across a number of different markets right. oh am i that's yeah. all right <laughs> <laughs> yes. look at that <laughs> <laughs> um and then there's a cleaning business mm. do what tell yeah, yes I do tell yeah well i what's like you said, you've pointed out that we've had a pandemic, so things kind of went a bit quiet with that. And I think a lot of us were knew that 2023 would be uh, that kind of difficult build-up year. You know, a lot of businesses were struggling to get their, I suppose, their cash flow back to 2019 figures. Mm. So with anything, and there's this, this word that keeps being dangled and threatened, the recession word. Mm. So... In any business, when you start talking about recession, one of the budgets that you can control, you can switch on and off, is marketing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You can control your marketing budget. You can switch it on, switch it off. Other budgets, you can't. Staffing, you might have to lay people off and blah, blah, blah. But your marketing budget is something that you've got a bit more control over. So I've been in business before. I've worked in, in the city. And whenever there was number crunching and we had to cut budgets, the first budget that was always talked about was marketing. Mm. So when you look at photography and videography, 
that fits that's marketing because that. it, it's the sort of thing you can cut it and actually there's no immediate impact okay. there, there is there is an impact but it isn't visible is it Not for straight away. quite for, for a little while and you can churn out old content you know and i'm mm. seeing a lot of businesses especially big businesses churning out content and they're repurposing their client stuff so if you look at social media at the moment, you will see big, and I won't mention any names, but you'll see some big companies that are actually using reels or social media content that people have posted. So say, for instance... Oh, so I, they're repurposing. So, so I, I like Coca-Cola. Yep, I so go and I create something of me drinking yep. some Coca-Cola. And, and Coca-Cola Coca will yeah. buy that. And, and I, uh, that, I just pick Coca-Cola as a big brand out yep. in the air. I don't know that they're doing this. They are. Oh, are they? They're one of them. Okay. They're one of them. Um, I don't... I, right, okay. I was going to say I don't, I don't drink fizzy drinks, so it's just, a, yep. just an example. So I'm posting something. I mean, that's actually quite a good tactic it's to do clever. anyway. It's very clever it? because you think about it, that's kind of almost a testimony. Yeah, it, it's an endorsement, isn't it? Basically, yeah. So, yeah. that, so big companies are, are churning out that kind of content at the moment. But of course, they don't need anybody to create that to help them create that content using cameras and fancy bits and no, pieces. No, so they're just using their phones. And obviously, you know, you can get away with. It's it's difficult because when you're looking at marketing, it depends on where your audience is. So if your audience is TikTok, are you going to spend fifteen grand? on a video with a big production team for a TikTok video, no, you're just going to use a mobile phone. Yeah. So if that's all you're using yeah. for your marketing, then you're not, not going to need high end. But if you want a video for your website, you are not going to use your mobile phone. Or if you do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, the results will speak for itself. So it, it depends on what the purpose of your marketing is. So a lot of people are cutting back. So what we're seeing across the photography industry, and I'm seeing it every day. I mean, the 17 of my close friends, 17 this year, have closed their studios. Oh. 17. They've hung up their cameras and they've gone and got day jobs. And is this for commercial photographers? or no, is it's it across the board. It's, right, okay, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. everything across the board. So with the cost of living, obviously a lot of families are not paying out for family photography anymore. They're just using their mobile phones. Yeah. You know, people are getting friends or family to do their wedding pictures, etc., etc. So, they're, they're, so there is a massive... Is, is that actually an impact of the quality of... No. The I cameras I, on the phones, no. No, I don't think so. I think it's people's perception of, possibly, they think, oh, my phone is... But then if you do the, you know, the like-for-like -like comparison, yeah, okay. there is a massive big difference. I think it is the cost of living. The mm. cost of living is having a big thing, and people's perception... I think for two years, we weren't able to mix and have big groups of families having big pictures and photographs and photo shoots taken. Yeah. So people have got used to that now. And they've got out of the habit of... Got, exactly, that's the exact word. They've yeah. got out of the habit. So it's now not a trend. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hopefully it comes back. Um, but like I said, so I needed to think about diversifying and looking at a different stream of income to come in. Now, as quickly as can I explain, I've got family members that had cleaning companies. So I've grown up with this, with this in the background oh, okay. throughout my whole life. And um, very successful cleaning companies, may I add. So I know of that world. So it was no brainer for me. Something that is kind of recession proof to a point is cleaning businesses. Mm. Mm. Why do you think it's recession proof? Because because if you look at it, shall we say naively, without uh, taking too much of a deep dive, mm -hmm. say right, well, okay, um, if I'm a household, potentially I can do my own cleaning, so I could get rid of my cleaner. Or have you positioned yourself, or the clients that you're dealing with, are the sorts of clients that actually it's impossible for them to do their own cleaning? There's two things to think about. So obviously it depends on what type of cleaning you do. So if you do commercial stuff, a lot of uh, business premises legally have to have cleaners to meet some criteria mm. for whatever that industry is. Yeah. So you're always going to need cleaners in regards to the commercial side of it. Domestic side of it. Now, COVID has been an interesting thing. <laughs> do tell. <laughs> do tell. So what I'm seeing is more and more people are asking for domestic cleaners in their home. A lot of people are working from home more. And their home is being used as an office and their, their attitude has changed slightly to hmm. it's getting on my nerves now. I'm working from home. I'm juggling the children. I can't be everything. Hmm. And the clutter in the house is, 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 is noticeably more because they're at home more and they're seeing it. And also potentially because if people are working from home, they have reduced their travelling costs yes, and, 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 their, and work expen their work hmm. expenses. And rather than spend it on wine and food. <laughs> <laughs> spend it on a cleaner. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I can have more of that and posher. 
if you said, well, actually, here I am, and the cleaning almost becomes part of your working expenses. You're not saying your train fare, your parking, your petrol, right. your bus, whatever it is you use. Okay, guess what? Let's get a cleaner. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. See, she's so, clever, isn't she? She's I, clever. I, I try. So a lot of the people that um, we do the domestic... So obviously we do a number of things. We do um, end-of-tenancy cleans. That is our biggest uh, revenue mm. at the moment. So with my photographer hat on, I did a lot of estate agency work, photography, videography, picked up the phone to them. We now are on four big estate agency books as a contractor. So we go and do um, builders' cleans because builders are very messy when they finish a job. Oh, yes, Plaster, yes, yes, dust, yes, yes. absolutely yes. everywhere. So we go in and do the builders' cleans, which are fun. Um, <laughs> and then end of tenancies. Uh, so we do a lot of that. Or people mm. that have bought a property that want it, it cleans before they move in. So there's a very quick mm. turnaround. We've just invested heavily in a lot of uh, carpet clean machines as well. So we go and do carpet cleaning as well, which is just brilliant. I'm, all, I'm, I'm just thinking, and I'm just going to—I'm going to ask Grace in a minute. And Grace, if I forget, we'll just chip in about carpets and recession. Mm. Um, but I'm just thinking, you know, just in case somebody sort of sat out there and thinking, hey, you know, what a good idea! I could go and do this. That if you're doing well, anything really. But I'm thinking health and safety, um, your legal obligations, especially mm. if you're doing end of tenancy cleans. There may be rubbish that needs disposing of, and I don't know about anywhere else, but in the UK, you can't just take that and stuff it somewhere else. So, you know, you have waste disposal regulations, you have health right. and safety regulations, you know, you need to look after the people that are doing it. So this I, this isn't something, you, you sort of need that background industry knowledge to set this sort of thing up, don't you? Totally. And if yeah. you want to get on the books of, I mean, I won't mention my clients, but on the big books of big estate agents, you know, you need a minimum of two million uh, cover insurance cover yeah. as well and there's a lot of criteria and co- co- uh, cosh regulations you need more than that to exhibit at my event so do you really yes. <laughs> Good to know. No, I do, luckily. Um, but, yeah, so there's a lot of things, like you said, tick lists that you need, boxes that need to be mm. ticked before you can even think about those kind of contracts. But you could start off small. Yeah. One of the big things that I'm concerned about with people working alone and going to properties on their own yeah. is that working alone Lo- loan, Yeah, loan, loan working. Yeah, so yeah. that's a big thing. So I've set up um, a Facebook page for cleaners, um, and I needed it about two weeks ago. We've got 16 members already, and it's a, a, a private Facebook group called The Cleaners Network. Um, and we support each other about there is stopped. no stopping no. you is there no, well, and how are you going to be monetizing that <laughs> <laughs> i have a plan for okay, I thought it's, it's free at the moment but yeah. um but it's it's just kind of get it's, it's a place for cleaners to go to to get um tips about you know cleaning mm. any products that are on discount any wholesalers that are worth you know contacting um contracts sharing terms and conditions policies how to deal with a difficult client how to sack a difficult client yeah. that's a good one um and that kind of thing so the cleaners network is something new and i've had a lot of feedback from people that have said this is a brilliant idea um and we want to be part of it mm. so i'm really excited about that so yeah so things just sparking but i'm not going to hang up my camera yeah just yet you know i love the photography and videography and that's something i'll continue to do it's not just me i mean when i first started in january it was just me and now mm. i've got four cleaners so it's it, we've got a team and we're only in may <laughs> there we so go. we're doing okay. well <laughs> grace um carpets and lockdown and where, where that market is going during covid 21st century car, uh, flooring actually flew because we did think that we would be banking everything and everything would be behind us and we would wait until covid was finished but we actually had to come out because we had so many inquiries. Of course, everyone being at home, they were decorating, they were painting. So we put, we put processes in place where if we were coming to measure, we ensured that the house that we were going to, that um, we were major distancing, kept samples there. We were gloved up, masked up, um, sanitised up. Mm. Um, and when the fitter arrived, we asked them either to be out of the house or into, in a completely different part of the house, which everyone obliged to. And actually, we did really well during COVID. It's, it, it's a really interesting conversation, isn't it? And this, this wasn't the way I was planning on it going, but let's have that conversation because I think COVID was, I think the, it, A, it was unexpected, but also at the start of it, what we expected to happen is, is certainly not what I expected to happen. I thought two weeks we were going to be out. You know, I was, well, we'll just delay that event for, for three weeks and we'll be back. Um, and I think a lot of people made a lot of assumptions about what would happen. And now that we're on the other side of it, 
I think it's quite interesting to look back and go, actually, do you know, I would have expected everybody would put everything on hold. They wouldn't want to buy a carpet um, because they were looking after the pennies or whatever. And, and actually, it sort of was turned on its head. Absolutely, because people were working from home. They didn't have the expenses. Mm. People were being paid for not going to work. They yeah. couldn't go out and spend their money. So suddenly they had this bank yeah. of money that they thought, oh, Let's put the loft on. Let's put the extension on. Let's do the de- carpets. Let's do the decorating. So, yeah, it worked out well for some of the trades like mm. that. I'm really hoping, obviously, that we don't get another experience like that. And I can't think of anything else that we could liken it to so that we can say, hey, do you know, there's a lesson to be learnt here. But I think there is a lesson to be learnt about making assumptions about what people are likely to do and making those assumptions quickly. And, and acting quickly. Yes, and, act, well. and acting quickly without... I, th- I think if, if there's something that's come out of COVID that's a good thing, it is to not make those assumptions and to sit down and really think and, and have a much deeper dive into what is possible. Because I think the world sort of shutting down as it did. I, I can't... Even now looking back, mm. it just seems like the weirdest, weirdest thing to have happened. It also, almost seems like it wasn't real. But it did happen mm. and it was real. And I think... It's taught me to go a little bit beyond what I think is possible mm. yeah. and yeah. to do that in the future and to not make quick assumptions about what A is likely to happen and B, how people are, are likely to react. Mm. It did. It was an interesting when yeah. you look at the psychology of people and how people did react to certain news and events. It yeah. was just Like you said, you couldn't even comprehend the direction things were going and not yeah. knowing... You know, it didn't seem like certain government departments knew what was going on, and then we were kind of left in the dark. So, like you said, we had to make our own assumptions. Um, for me, I had a slightly different experience to Grace um, in that things quietened down for me for a little bit, but then I had people calling me and saying, oh, well, we've got these products, we've had to close our shop, we want to sell things online, we need photographs of them because we don't have them. And I literally had a conveyor belt of people yeah. dropping stuff onto my um, front doorstep in boxes Luckily, I had a ring doorbell so I could communicate with them via ring doorbell. I took their boxes in, photographed them, called them, said, come and get them in two days' time. They come and collected them, job done, and they were able to have their mm. online shop. So for me, I was very busy with product photography, which was brilliant, but I went and got myself a job in Tesco's, stacking shelves in the evening, because I knew that I knew that this was going to be for a long time. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, and I thought, I need some money coming in, and I'm so grateful for that experience, and it was good mm. fun. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleased that you shared that because I come across quite a few people, not all, not always women actually, but very often women, who are really, uh, they see going and getting a job in a supermarket or in fact any sort of job as a failure, mm. as it means they they failed in their business. It hasn't worked. I'm going, of course, it hasn't. You know, it's not a failure. You're just doing what you need to do right now at the moment to keep things afloat. That's actually being a good businesswoman, not a bad businesswoman. And yeah. to my mind, I think for me, it would be easier to go and if I, because I, you know, I'm quite creative. I get worn out if I'm not careful. I think I'd be better off going and stacking shelves in Tesco's. For number one, I'd walk. I'd be moving. Mm. Oh God, my step count yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So I'd, <laughs> number one, I'd be getting number one, I'd be getting some exercise. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't be doing anything that required too much no. thought and brain power. I wouldn't be working on spreadsheets and creating content for somebody else or doing anything like that, which would leave me with time actually at the end of, of, of my work, my working employment, to do, do my own stuff. But also it was that kind of job that um, it's quite hands-on, actually. You don't realise how, how much you have to do with, with the stacking shelves. There's a lot of thought going into it. But in between, it, it did give me that pause moment. And when I was stacking the shelves, I was thinking about the next journey, yeah. what faster photo meant. You know, and it, it so it was, was a nice distraction as was, well. It was, it was, and it was a pause moment. And yeah. I met some amazing people as well, which I still work with now in, in other guys with, with other projects. Um, and it made me appreciate things on a different mm. level. And it was a great yes. experience for me. You know, so you know, I, think, I think the message from all of us is never worry about going out and taking a job. It doesn't matter where it is or what you're doing. Everybody does what they need to do. But there are some real benefits for your business beyond money coming in to keep you going. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I, I loved it. I absolutely loved every moment of it. I was quite sad when they said, oh, we're taking our furlough staff back now. 
damn. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get a hundred pound voucher to say thank you very much for helping out. Isn't oh, that lovely? That's what well it's been paid. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a really that's good, it. a really good experience yeah. all around. You know, just go out there and do it. Sometimes I think it, it, it's it's a good thing to do anyway mm. because an, another thing that I have experienced is that people who start up a side job or or a side business alongside a paid job very often get more done in yes. both their job and their business than if they're running their business full time. They procrastinate as much. Yes. <laughs> because because they know I've just got to get this done. I've got to get it out there because I actually don't have the time. Yeah. You know, I've got to get up at five. I'm going to do my writing between five and eight and then I'm off because I've got my job and you get it done. You know, whereas very often I might be there, cup of tea. <laughs> oh, I'm always time for coffee now. <laughs> You're right on what you said about a failure. People's attitudes, if you've got a oh. side hustle or you've got something extra, it means that your main business isn't doing very well. Yes, right. That's a load of rubbish. It is. And, and there's, yeah. a, there's a guy that I follow, he's called Scott, and his, his uh, channel is called uh, Tin House Studios. And he is so open about his photography business. It is unreal. And we need more people like him. And he actually said, you know, these are the, my other income streams. This is how I actually make money. Yeah. I'm never going to make money from photography alone. And I don't know any photographers that are mega rich. Mm, I, I don't, d- <laughs> sadly. <laughs> I I, th- I think there are celebrity photographers who who are, are mega rich, but that's not the. No- I think it's a little bit like writers, isn't it? Yeah. You know, there's Stephen King, and there's a load of other people like Stephen King, and then there's everybody else, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everybody else is earning tuppence. But um, no, I, I'm all for just getting out there and doing what you need to do, and not hiding anything. And if anybody's judging, well, do you know what they can do? They can. Mm. F off. Absolutely. You know, who cares? You're doing your thing in your life. You're doing what you need to do. Sometimes it's going to make you happy. Sometimes it's not going to make you happy, but it, you may learn something. And if anybody wants to cast judgment on that or make assumptions about your business, well, you don't want them anyway, do you? Because they'll be a pain in the ass from the moment they become a client. Yep. So yep. go and do the other thing. <laughs> yes. Right. And talking about going and doing other things um, and also learning from things as well, I'm going to ask you, we're going to have a, a little bit of a sort of round the table now what's your biggest failure mine yours my biggest failure so i wrote this down actually and i can't find it um so well, it's not that big then is no, it no 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 <laughs> so i think i think it was a business tip something that went wrong or something that um i always thought that having a studio would define me as a business. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's quite a good one, isn't it? I was yes. always told that once you have a studio, you've made it. And the perception is that you're a better photographer, creator. You're more professional. You're more professional rather than uh, running a studio from your living room. Yeah. That is completely wrong. So mm. I've gone through the various... I started my business from my living room. Then I went and had a studio. Then I went back to uh, hiring spaces as and when. Yeah, because I wasn't using my yeah. studio as much. Then I thought, oh, actually, I, I miss having a studio. So I went back to a studio, loved being there, but then that was sadly taken away because the, the, mm. the premises closed down. So I'm back to being homeless again, which is a really good experience. <laughs> um, and I'm hiring more. But do you know what I'm finding? More and more businesses are wanting you to go and have the shoot at their location. Yeah. Or they're wanting, they don't want the stuffy plain backdrop headshot mm. shoot they want something i don't like the, those no they, they don't want that feel they want something where you're going to a location maybe a coffee shop or somewhere mm, else like that habitat. yeah exactly or outdoors um so that was one of the biggest things that i i, I was told um Sean's natural habitat would be in a coffee shop let's coffee face shop. it, it <laughs> is. but it but it is Lots i like cake. i i like i i have got an office and there's a reason for that. It's because I couldn't possibly have people in my house. I, I, I would be so stressful. Um, <laughs> just, the, just the thought that we'd be, we'd be sat there chatting and there'd like be a pair of knickers or something just po- po- peeking out from, uh, from, from underneath the side the sideboard i couldn't i couldn't hack it i just no no you need to come to an office where you can just park and come downstairs and you know there's coffee and tea already done and all that sort of thing it sort of suits me actually down to the ground um but i can't remember 
Oh, yeah, but coffee shops, coffee shops, even though I have an office, a coffee shop for me has a different energy mm. and I like to be in a space where there's other stuff going on and I think if, you, if I need to get creative, if I need to start thinking differently or I've got some planning to do, I go out to a coffee shop, mm. preferably one where I'm, where I'm not going to see anybody I know. Right. So I, I, as long as I can plug in and I can sit down, Cafe Nero is, is actually really good for that. Cafe Nero have booths and plugs and Weatherspoons, Weatherspoons have booths, plugs, and lights you can pull down. <laughs> so, I didn't know that. yeah, it's it's perfect. And it's, it's cheap in Weatherspoons. It's perfect well. for yeah. sitting and and people ignore you. And it's perfect for sitting down and just switching off. They have a bottomless coffee cup. What a Weatherspoons? Absolutely. Oh gosh. So I I did some interviews for the cleaning company. I thought, right, I'm going to uh, go, and we went to I won't say which one, but we went to a coffee shop. I wish I'd known about Witherspoons now, because we could that would have been probably better to have job interviews in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, and you could sit in a booth and you could be there all day. Um, I I like being out in different spaces. I think going out to a different space is is uh, it, it sort of gets the creative juices going. You know, it it just. It blows away some of the crap sometimes. I think, right. I think having the studio space was nice, and and I felt more creative than being at mm. home because I think without being at home, sometimes there's too many distractions. Like I've got to do the washing up or yeah. this, that, and the other, and, and blah blah blah. And people don't always take you seriously when you're at home working. No, friends phone up and they yeah. think because you're at home, you've got you've got time. Yeah, <laughs> I was supposed to be working, but so I might do that, Sean. I might mm. kind of pick a day. A week and go somewhere new yeah. and work from there for the day. Yeah, just it just gives you a, a, sometimes you need a fresh perspective. Mm. And going out, a coffee shop is convenient. It, well, it has coffee for one thing. <laughs> and isn't it a deductible expense? <laughs> it, 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 it is. But so many of them now are set up to for people to be able to work. Mm. Yeah. So okay. let's let's have some of our sort of round robin stuff. And I think we are going to start with actually um we're gonna start with a top tool, a technique or a productivity tip. And I'm gonna ask both of you for these. So Grace, you're gonna have to dive in now as well. Can I just ask a question before we move yeah. on? I'm interested that mm. you got for cleaners one of the biggest problems I had with cleaners because I've got some properties mm. is the reliability oh. and it's not just the reliability they start off brilliantly and then they, they tail off you know they, they cut corners so tut, 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 tut. and if, it, if I didn't do spot checks I wouldn't be able to keep on top of my cleaners and I've got I've got two fabulous cleaners now okay. so I'm just like how did you find the real reliability of your cleaners yeah, just Pot luck, really. But my with my cleaners, we work in twos. We work in pairs. And so we'll get one. So what will happen is, say, for instance, it's a house. Yeah. You, you have one week where one does upstairs and the other one does downstairs. And then they swap. Oh. Yeah. So they, they swap. And then they get used to, yeah, different techniques. And, and you know, that also keeps them on their toes exactly. themselves. So if there's two of them, yeah. Is it, yeah, exactly. But we've also got checklists. Mm-hmm. So I, they've got yeah. checklists that they have to sign off when they've done a job as well. Yeah, I really like that idea of swapping them around and doing mm-hmm. different things yeah. because people do get complacent, don't they? They, they run, we'll, we'll use the, you, they, they run a mop round and all the time they'll miss the same corner yeah. because, they, because they get into the routine of how they're running the mop round. I mean, we do it, out, it's not just cleaning, I mean, it's just what happens, isn't it? You start shaving things off yeah. and before you know where you are, you've got a great big pile of crap in the corner, <laughs> whatever, whatever, the, whatever the job is. Um, but I don't think it was potluck that you have good cleaners. I'm ever so sorry. I really just yeah. don't. I just don't think it is. Intuition. You know, I, 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 did, I did interview heavily. Yeah. yeah. And, and there Absolutely. was probably, you had a selection criteria in your head already. Yep. You probably sent out an application or a message that, you know. 17 hey, cleaners apply. Yeah. For one position. Yeah. So it, it it's no, it's, it's yeah. just not pot. I like a so I seem to have t- tied my headphones <laughs> behind my skull. I don't know how I do this. Let's um, l- l- let's 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 go around the table with some of our regular questions while I unfurl myself before I. So you talk about top, b- before top, I top before I yes. So a top Grace. tip. Productivity. I think it's always in- incentive. For mm. me, um, I want to be able to say. So I'll give an example of what happened. I had a cleaner, and I have a cleaner, and she is absolutely amazing. And she's always turned up. Um, I give her some flexibility, 
and I was getting in touch with her to come to do a particular job over the weekend and she was with her friend whose friend was um, dad was not very well at all she, he's since passed when I found out that he'd passed I'd actually given her an extra few hours payment so that she had the money to be able to go and get some flowers and spend some time oh. with her friend so she really appreciated that and I just wanted it wasn't because I felt sorry for her I just wanted her to mm. be in a position to be able to do that so it's incentive so I actually give her a pay rise every six months because it's not a lot mm. but she appreciates that because she knows that I appreciate what she does for me and the flexibility she has for me because being service accommodation I could phone up today and say can you come come in tomorrow and she will do that. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I've kind of done the similar thing in regards to incentives with, with pay, um, so people know. Yeah, mm. but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Katrina, have you got a top tip or a productivity tool? Or I ha- Yes. So going back to the cleaning one, I found a really good one for my cleaning business, which is an app which is connected to my FreshBooks, which FreshBooks is like QuickBooks. Um, it's a, it's a, a, not everybody. It's an invoicing. Yeah, it's, it, lots of tools in, in there. Invoicing, accountancy, bookkeeping But it also stuff. has productivity bits on the app as well. So um, you can um, assign... Uh, a password for all of your cleaners to log in and log out at particular postcodes. You can set the postcodes on the app so that you know that, I don't know, number five, I don't know, 10 Downing Street or whatever, <laughs> so, um, they're clocking in at nine o'clock and then they can clock out, and, but they can't clock in down the road. It has You can set it where it's literally oh. just yards away from that so you know they're clocking in and clocking out. Um, so that is a great app. And then what it does is it then talks to payroll yeah, and then and, and it literally adds up. So you say how much their hourly rate is, and it will clock it all up for you. Um, and a lot of my cleaners, I pay the travel between sites as well, rather than just mm. the time that they're at premises. So it will then calculate their driving time as well from one site to the next site, and then whack it all in for payroll. And what's it called? Oh, well, it's through QuickBooks. Okay, sorry, sorry, Quick, yeah, FreshBooks. FreshBooks. So it, it, FreshBooks. it's like a bolt on to yeah. FreshBooks. And if you're a Barclays customer... Um, you get that a business customer you get that free mm, that's very handy like, it's very very handy so yeah I love the little tools like that I'm a bit of a, a gadget uh, freak so yeah I have started using a new tool this week called okay. ClickUp oh what's that it's a project management tool. It actually does a lot more than I'm using it for. So but sexy. it's it's it, it's it's you know it's easy if you're a bit freaky. Like. <laughs> yeah, like me. It's yeah. like me. I'm a bit excited. Go so on, I I sort of have been through quite a lot of project management tools now. Um, but there's something about ClickUp that I think, and, and I'm being a bit cautious here because there tends to be a there's a repetitive cycle for me, right. which is oh this is really good, this is the best tool I've ever come across, oh this makes life ever so much easier, and then about three to four weeks later, it's a bit things, shiny over things, here. Things, <laughs> things are getting it's not so much that, but things are getting a little bit um, full, right. shall we say, and overwhelming, and I've suddenly realised that, um, and this is probably not the fault of the tool that I've I've got about 300 hours of work to do before Friday. Um, um, probably the result of me not checking in enough and doing stuff. Right. But So I tend to sort of like forget about it because it's become too much. But what I particularly like about this is the ability to manage lots and lots of projects if you want to, or manage just a couple, but to be able to have an overall wor- workload view. And can you add other people into those Yes, as well? you can. So you can look at other people's workloads. You can look at, but you can primarily, you manage your own workload, but it's really good for teams. Right. Um, but because it's got this overview, so many of them that I've tried, you can manage individual projects, but you can't go, actually, here's all of these tasks that have to be done for these different projects. So if you've got lots of different income streams and lots of projects on the go, like I have... Mm. Um, okay, here's everything that needs to be done. Actually, out of all of these, out of the Women in Business Big Show and the radio show and the monthly events and all of the other bits and pieces, what actually really needs to happen today? What's the most important one out of all of those? Without flicking in and out of all so of the different... it prioritises different, it for you. you. Can, yeah, you can go it? through. You can go through and go, actually, I need to do that, that and that. And you can see the whole thing. Does it kind of allocate... Does it measure how much time you spend? Yes. Oh, yeah, it, uh, well, it, it does cool. two things. You can put a time estimate in yeah. and you can actually measure time as well 
Ooh, that is sexy. And it does some <laughs> it does something else as well that's really nice. Mm. Especially if you use Airtable, because this is quite a simple thing. At the if you, you can divide things up, you can sort things really easily. And at the end of the column you can add them up. Oh, you can oh, you can do an average and a and a calculate. It's like a I still use Airtable. Yeah. So it's like it's like a cross between Airtable and um and and it has a calendar in it as well so you can put everything together in one calendar which you can sort of do with Airtable as well and if you don't know what either of these tools are you have no idea what I'm talking about I realize that what was the name of the app click up it, it's it's an app um it's really easy to use on the phone it's an app um and it's web-based as well so you can use you can use both and i'm so far i'm really loving how easy it is to move things around in it mm. so sold yeah yep, yep. It, it's 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 really good i better go and get an affiliate link hang on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no I, it's i i, I would wait Once for code sean 10 yes <laughs> <laughs> well I, I i would wait if you want feedback from me, yeah. wait Give for it a, three months. Yeah, <laughs> no, probably not as long as that. Give it about three months, or three weeks. And if I'm not like punching people, okay, or punching it, and if my computer isn't out the window, <laughs> it's it's a it's a stay. It's, it's, a, it's okay. a stay. I have to say, I I like the the simplicity and the complexity mm. th- that you can put side by side. So many of them before I've used, they're so complicated. They're just so complicated. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm right with that. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. Totally. I see I've been waffling on. Totally lost where we are now. Okay, let's go to... Um, what have you learnt this week? Ah, oh, so this week, I for the cleaning business, I have been pitching for a massive contract. Huge contract. Um, and I learnt that... Uh, don't... <laughs> underestimate how long it takes people to get back to you with information yeah <laughs> ha ha so i've been sitting and waiting for stuff and i just had to pick up the phone this morning and just chase people up so i've now got the, the quotes that i need um but i've learned so much from um the research in in, in getting ready for this bid it's really pushed mm. me out of my comfort zone and i used to do a lot of project management in a previous life which that click up will be very mm. helpful for. Um, and uh, it's kind of taken me back to that. And I've kind of, you know, like when you have certain skill sets and you put them to the back of your head, Yeah, I've kind of pulled them out from the very grey, grey, grey parts of my brain. It's still there. So it's like muscle memory. So what you've learnt is that actually go for much, much bigger stuff than you've ever gone for before because it will raise your expectations of the sorts of stuff and contracts that you can deliver, mm-hmm. even if you don't get that contract along the way, yeah, you right will right. also lose some. You will also learn some stuff. It's also taught me to kind of so now I've got the formula. I've got all the figures. I know that if someone picks up the phone tomorrow, mm. I haven't got to wait around for people to get yeah. back to me with yeah. figures. I've got this formula. Someone calls to me tomorrow and says, Katrina, we've got this job. This is what it is. Da, 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 da. I've got that formula now. I'm good to go. Mm. So I'm, I'm loving this. I think the other thing when you go for bigger contracts is that the resilience women have by problem solving. So mm. if you don't have a particular um, system in in some in a um, in something that someone's asked you for, mm. you'll find a way to, oh, God, to get yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas I find that when I the men that I've come across, well, no, we don't do that, and that's it. Uh, well, <laughs> we find a way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so often I say, will you stop telling me we can't have that or we can't do that? Let's find a way that we can yep. have that or we can do that. What was Richard Brunson said? He said, say yes to everything and figure out how to do it later. Yes, That's absolutely. exactly where I'm at right now. <laughs> and that's what I love. And I find lots and lots of women are like that. Yeah. No detriment to men, but some of the men that I've come across. Yeah. It's I mean, in the same breath, I do know my limits. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yes, so, absolutely. So I kind of I know my limits, but I'm kind of just slowly just pushing it slightly at the yeah. moment, but loving it, loving the feeling, the rush, mm. loving it right now. I, I'm yeah. going to disagree with uh, with oh, the Richard. You I, do. Well, no, I'm going to disagree <laughs> slightly with the say yes to everything because okay. I think one of the best things I ever learned was to, what to say no to. So I think Richard Branson is saying yes to stuff that's right for him and fits within what he's doing in his portfolio. Agreed, yeah. But I think when we start out in business, we say yes to everything. And then we have to go and learn an entire new system. <laughs> and all we're going to do is like it just for that client. And, and then something happens and they're not your client anymore.
or or you don't like them or whatever and you've you've spent days weeks <laughs> years learning how to do this one thing and it's totally away from where you're yeah, from I, where you are I think you're right it has, still has to be yeah. your parameters yeah. doesn't yeah. it yeah, yeah. you have to say actually do I want to go and learn all of this yeah I'm going to be an astronaut tomorrow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grace, what have you learnt this week? Um, not necessarily this week. I did learn that sum up you can actually have a QR code to have being paid. So <coughs> with my other hat on, the waffle business, um, we have sum up and it's a nightmare. If you're in the middle of a field, you cannot get signal. However, I learned that if you have a QR code on your table, people just have to scan it with their phone. I don't go through the hassle of trying to find space in the air in the sky trying to get trying to get signal and it goes there's no fees, no sum up mm. fees, goes directly into my bank account. I think that's really good if you if you have a one price product. Yes. Okay. So right. you're selling, you're, especially if you're at an event, you're selling, mm. I don't know, a beanie hat or in your case a waffle. Actually, I don't think, because the lady that told me that did network marketing. So she's got lots of products and different prices. And it was from up. her that mm. I learned it from. You can, conf- you, you, you sort of can, but it works much, much better if you've got one thing. Mm. Anyway, it's a super, super tip. Remember your QR codes. It's a really good way of taking payment quite quite quickly. Yeah. Um, and people are getting used to using QR codes, aren't they? Sort of t- five, six years ago when they came out, um, they were a stunning idea. And I think all, a lot of companies jumped on them um, because it was like, really easy to do. But I don't think the public wanted to use them. No, I think there's a bit of resistance. Yeah. But QR codes for many different things. The business cards. Yeah. Um, yeah. Recently, um, the I worked... Exactly. I worked with a client. And what we did was we... Obviously, we had to, uh, some um, photographs done. And they had them printed. And we put the QR code, which linked to their promotional video on the QR code oh, so they had yeah. their pictures in their office and it said scan me and it took them to the promotional video that was about that shoot or behind the yeah, scenes I was they, it was hilarious there, there are so many different ways of using them so yes thank you for, for mentioning that I've totally forgotten about them because I've sort of absorbed them into my business and not really thought about them we use them at events for people to join newsletters um, because it, it's really easy and it's quite surprising the number of people who who are quite happy to do that. I always thought it was going to be something that young people do, mm. is get their phone out and scan a QR code. Not at all, no, no. actually. I've not started at all. working them into my um, contracts as well. So if we've got a, a kind of a printed contract, we've got a QR code which takes you to an onboarding video. Oh, oh, mm. oh that's clever. I know. Oh. <laughs> I fell off them. <laughs> yes, get you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your top challenge this week? I think I mentioned mine earlier about trying to get quotes and, and things from people. Yeah. Um, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? You think that people oh, would want man. to, you're going, hey, I've potentially got a lot of business here for you, that they'd be sort of coming back and saying, yep, OK, it's on its way or we haven't forgotten about you. We just need to get X, Y and Z together and, and make sure no. it's right for you. No. no. And I think also it does help if you know more about what you're asking for. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, to be fair, so I did have a conversation with someone and I, I realised quite quickly what I didn't know very very quickly uh, I was like I'm really sorry but yes but let's just go with this assumption it's this and then give me a quote on that and then I'll come back to you on that one so um, I think the biggest thing I've learnt this week and, and, and things that I should have been better at was just more time scales and being on top of things mm, giving mm. yourself enough time yes indeed mm. mm-hmm. Grace what have you learnt this week That's like oh that. no what's been your biggest challenge this week sorry um, well I think you just touched on it and it's that to-do list isn't it Mm -hmm. it's getting to the bottom of that blasted to-do list my what I love about my to-do list is now I have them on post-it notes and I have them on a board and when I have completed that task I actually take it and screw it up and throw it in the bin (laughs) and there is actually quite a satisfaction thing I've done that get out of the way and throw it away I love that Mm. I can't do that (laughs) I'll tell, I'll tell you why, and it sort of it, it sort of showed itself perfectly with the number of jobs that I redid or went to redo again this week, where somebody said, "Oh, have you done X, Y, and Z?" And, oh, oh no, and I've gone and done it, and I've gone there. And I've gone, actually, I've already done that, 
and but I had no record of it. No. So that's something else that ClickUp does. I mean, lots of stuff does this, where you can keep a record of all of the stuff that you've actually done. Mm. So you can, if, if your brain is working like mine is at the moment, you can potentially very quickly go and have a look and say, actually, no, I have done that. Yeah, I've got one of those old-fashioned to-do lists, yeah. books, books, and then you just cross it out when you've done it, and it's yeah. nothing better than when you go back. You think, oh, I'm really productive that week. Yeah. And it's, it's moving those things well. onto the next to-do list. Well, ca- <laughs> yeah, there's lots of CFs on mine. Carry forwards, carry forwards, carry well, forwards. I, 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 my problem with that is it was okay running it as a to-do list when I didn't have multiple projects. Mm. But as soon as I started to have multiple projects which don't necessarily have set deadlines, that's when I had to start going, okay, do I do that job from this project or that job from this project? Which yeah. one do I do? And I'd end up sort of staring at it like, <laughs> like a rabbit in the headlights. Four hours later. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should have had this thing. I know when it's going wrong because I'm opening and closing tabs on the computer and that's my... <laughs> That's my sign. When I've been through like 35 yeah. times, <laughs> that's my sign. I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. <laughs> and knowing what you're supposed to do next is the key, isn't it? So yeah. now, but now also having this list of done stuff, you know, it can take 15 minutes to go and look at something and oh, find yeah. out that you've, you've already actually done it. Yeah. Um, complete waste of time. So... Really, really useful to do. But I, I, I wish I could work with post-it notes mm. still because they do, they, they are brilliant, aren't they? You well, can just move them from one thing to another, and they're so they're tactile. Yeah. And it's that physical, yeah, chucking yeah. them away. But things pop into your head. You as you're walk, wandering around during the day, you think, oh, I have to go, I have to go and do that. But you won't remember until the end of the day. I think, oh, I should have done that. But if you've written it down and put it somewhere, mm. and you see it. It's like that vision board. If you see it, you think, oh, God, yes. Yeah, but you see, how, if you work on everything on a post-it note, how do you write it down if you're walking around I, Tesco? I, I, I always write on my, my hands. Yeah. You see, I'm look. terrible for writing things on my hands. Oh, oh. Yeah. I should remember that. I always do. I have a pen on me at all times and I write on my hands. No, that wouldn't work. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Uh, Sean hasn't got a long enough arm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Katrina, we're coming up to the top of the show. We're coming up to the end of the show. How can people get hold of you for... Both businesses. For (laughs) photography and cleaning. Is it the same contact details? Yeah, pretty much. Um, So, obviously, we've got the mobile number, which is 077-34-261-422. You can contact me for for both businesses on that one. Or you can go to uh, fastphoto.co.uk for the website. Um, And uh, with a cleaning company, it's razzydazzleclean.com. Co.uk. We are going to finish on a couple of questions here because we do have a few a few minutes left. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm going to ask both of you this: okay. um, What is your top tip for being in business, Katrina? You go first. Um, my top tip is act quickly when something happens. You know, I think sometimes people can overthink things. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think if you know that you are 100% confident, your gut is telling you this is good, don't sit on it, act quickly. That's okay. my top tip. Grace, what's your top tip? Say what you do and do what you say. If you've committed yourself to something, make sure you carry it out. We mm. all know life happens mm. and sometimes it can't be avoided. But if you are going to be presenting somewhere and you need to show up, it's no good phoning the, co- the presenter 10 minutes before and say, sorry, I can't make it, because that's not fair. Mm. Mm. It's do what you say and say what you do. Turn up. Mm. Yep. So looking at your business journey, what do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started out? Who would have thought that cleaning... <laughs> would earn me more money than photography and videography I think it's going back to what you said about pride you know never be too proud mm. you know if you want to earn money if you want to return retire at a certain age don't be too proud you know who, who's, who's setting the standard of what's good for a business and what's not you know as long as you are comfortable in what you're doing and you can hold your head up high as a business owner Sean's dying in the corner right now because she's like trying not to sneeze I'm not di- I, have, my I have sneezed my headphones have fallen off <laughs> <laughs> she handled that so well and I wish I was filming that right now <laughs> bottom slid down in the chair it all happened so, uh, so that's mine <laughs> Grace what's your top tip uh, what, what do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started out uh, that, that's quite difficult because every day has been a learning curve as you go through business and you're learning things all the time. Um, 
if you are planning on starting a business, do it. If you are going to procrastinate about starting the business, you're going to procrastinate for the rest of it. Exactly. Everything that you do in your business. And it's about building that confidence to get to that decision to do what you're going to do. And just do it. Oh, that's Nike, isn't it? Yeah. But also, <laughs> find out from your out your circle of, of trusted people who can help you with it. Because it's, you know, just because a lot of people procrastinate because they can't do it. They, they think they can't do that. So if you know that people have got the right skill sets around you, pull them together, get your resources and go for it. And that's what I did with the cleaning company. It's not just me that set this up. There's other people behind me too. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would say is that people are very quick to judge. Mm. And sometimes your nearest the dearest are the worst people to judge you. <laughs> Don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, and I think you need to take advice from people who are in business, not people that are happy with their nine to five job. Not that there's anything wrong no. with that. It's just that they don't have the experience of what it is to run a business. And it goes. Oh, sorry. Um, well, uh, no, I'm, uh, we're at the top of the show, but I want to ask you two, both of you, something really, really quickly. I don't want you to think about it. You're just going to answer me. Katrina, mm. what's your superpower? My superpower is listening, oh, understanding. <laughs> And doing. <laughs> Grace, what's your superpower? I was going to say listening. <laughs> no, oh no, just, 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 just <laughs> listening. Yes, listening. Listening. Okay, thank you so much to my lovely co host for today, Grace Kelly, founder of 21st Century Carpets, um, the waffle thing. What, what is that? The bubble waffle. Company. The bubble waffle and chair of Women in Business Mid Kent and Katrina Festerazzi, who is the founder of Faster Photo and Razzy Dazzle Clean. And Razzy Dazzle Clean. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much we are going to be back with the women in business radio shows very very shortly and we wish you a fantastic time in the meantime tune in next week to the women in business radio show for more stories ideas and inspiration to help you grow your business